jumping into what we are talking about today is um, what we are doing now. We're leaving the functions topic behind and we're moving on to a new topic and our new topic is trigonometry. Um, and the first part of our trigonometry topic is we need to um, just do a quick recap of our basic ideas of trigonometry. So I'm going to move some of these through some of these ideas a little bit a little bit quick. Hopefully they're, they're just a nice quick recap for you um, and we'll go from there. If I'm moving too fast and you've missed anything, please chuck a, a comment up there and uh, I'll come back to it. Cool. So just first of, first of all is degrees, minutes and seconds. It's specifically mentioned in your syllabus that you need to be able to calculate a degree um, correct to its nearest minute. So what are degrees, minutes and seconds again? Well, if you just think they're like smaller um, units of, uh, of measurement, like a, a meter, if you have a meter, you can break a meter down into centimeters and then again, smaller again in, into millimeters. So we can get more accuracy. The same can be said with degrees. All right, between one degree and two degree, we have a large number of smaller units that we can help improve our accuracy of our measurements. And those small units are called minutes. And then the next unit down from minutes are seconds. All right. On your calculator, if you have a, a Casio calculator, just above the um, ENG button, the English button, as I like to call it, there is the degrees, minutes, seconds button. Um, and that's what we use to type degrees, minutes, seconds in on our calculator. Um, so hopefully that's okay. Um, and just quickly on your calculator, if you typed 45.5 degrees and then you press equals, your calculator display will show 45.5 degrees. That's what we asked it to type. But then if you press the degrees, minutes, second buttons again, it'll change it to 45 degrees, 30 minutes and zero seconds, right? And the whole reason it changes 45.5 to 30 minutes is 30 minutes is half of an hour, right? And of course our 30 minutes is half of our, our time minute measurement of an hour, which is 60. That's where 0 0.5 equals 30, right? And that's super important because when it comes to rounding and our number system, if I was just give you 7.89 to round that, you would round 7.8 up because 0 0.8 was greater than 0 0.5. And why 0 0.5 our measurement or 0 0.5 is our measurement mark because it's halfway on our counting system, on our base 10 system. When it comes to degrees, minutes and seconds, well, half of a degree is 30 minutes. So when we ask you to round, we're looking for are you above or below 30 minutes or are you above or below 30 seconds? Is that okay? Hopefully that, that feels comfortable for some people, um, and, and those notes are written there as well. All right, so I've, what I've got here, I've asked you to round 3.76893 degrees, and I want you to round that to the nearest minute. So I'll give you guys 10 seconds. Can you go, or maybe, maybe a bit more, go grab your calculators, type that in for me, press the degrees, minutes, seconds button, and have a go at rounding that for me quickly. Cool, three degrees, 46 minutes. All right, so if we have a look at that, when you type that in on your calculator, what we've got there is, yes, Jacob, uh, when you type it in your calculator, you get three degrees, 46 minutes, and 8.15 seconds. What we notice about our 8.15 seconds, because it is less than 30 seconds, that means our degrees, our, well, sorry, our minutes stay the same. So this answer becomes three degrees, 46 minutes. And there we've just rounded to our, correct to our nearest unit. Um, moving on to the second example there, uh, 47 degrees, 58 minutes and 47.32 seconds. It is amazing how often in exam situations and you get asked around to the nearest minute, something like this comes up. And the reason this comes up, the most common mistake is that people see that four, and they go, well, four is less than five, because four is less than five, it stays as 58 minutes. 
right? But we need to think that for that's not just a four, that that actually represents seconds, and then that's 47 seconds. And 47 seconds, well, that's greater than 30. So yeah, everyone's got that. Our answer is 47 degrees, 59 minutes. So just be really careful that you don't get caught up just looking for the number five when you do your rounding. Your rounding is, am I above or below halfway? That's what we want you to start thinking about. Cool. All right, so that's rounding. Uh, hopefully that's all cool. Um, right angle trig. Um, through this, you've done right angle trig in year nine and year 10. Coming to the advanced course, we assume you are very comfortable with right angle trigonometry. Um, what we are talking about today will be the last time you actually talk about right angle trigonometry on its own um, for, the, for the rest of school, if you stay in the advanced course. It will pop its head up from time to time in other questions that we try to solve, and you need to use it as a process to solve. But in terms of just being a standalone only right angle trig, today is pretty much the, the first and last time it will come across as a standalone question. So um, just quickly running through some basics, um, labeling, labeling the triangle, right? In all right angle trigonometry questions, you are going to always be given a reference angle, right? The whole triangle is labeled specifically with the angle that you've been asked to, to identify and look at. Um, if that reference angles moves, the names of our sides move. So just quickly, hopefully remember that there's the opposite, the adjacent and the hypotenuse. And that the opposite side of a triangle is always on the other side of the triangle to our reference angle. So if you locate the reference angle, go to the other side of the triangle, and that will always be the opposite side because it's opposite our reference angle. The adjacent side is always the side that touches, is next to the right angle and the reference angle. It always has both those two touching it, right? So the adjacent side is always next to both of those. And finally, the hypotenuse, well, the definition of the hypotenuse is the side that is always opposite the right angle. Um, I know we get lazy and we say that, oh, it's the longest side of the triangle. And the hypotenuse is the longest side of a right angle triangle because the longest side of a triangle is always opposite the largest angle. And in a right angle triangle, 90 degrees is always going to be the largest angle. So by default, the hypotenuse always becomes the larger side. But its definition is, is the side that is opposite the right angle. Um, so hopefully that feels familiar. Um, remember, all these notes are going to be up on Canvas if I'm moving a bit too fast for you to copy something down. When it comes to soccer top, this is something you're expected to, to have remembered and memorized. Um, from my understanding, this isn't going to appear on your reference sheet um, in any form uh, of basic right angle tree. So soccer toe is something that you're going to need to, to remember and commit to memory. Um, and that sine is just the opposite side over hypotenuse, cos is the adjacent of hypotenuse, and tan is just opposite over adjacent. Uh, hopefully we're feeling pretty comfortable. Hopefully that labeling of triangles um, feels comfortable. Um, from my experience, students who do advanced maths, when it comes to the algebra and the, the, the working out of, of trigonometry, they, they can crunch equations quite comfortably. The most common mistake is, is that they rush labeling their triangle. So just take a bit of, bit of care when you do that. So this is now the time I'm gonna call out for you guys to start throwing out some answers for me. So we've got this first triangle here. We know it's a right angle triangle because 5 squared plus 12 squared is 169 and the square root of 169 is 13. So that is perfectly a right angled triangle. Um, just because I threw Pythagoras out there, remember trigonometry grew from our understanding of Pythagoras as well. Um, and because it grew from our understanding of Pythagoras as well, it kind of gets thrown in there 
as you guys assume you know what Pythagoras is and can use it in a right angle triangle. So now that I've thrown that out there, can someone tell me sine theta, what would its ratio be? Or what would be the fraction from this triangle that would describe sine theta? Thanks, Jacob. Five on 13, the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Beautiful, a few, few lovely answers throwing there. Uh, cos theta, what are we looking at there? Thanks, Ethan. First, oh, yeah, first one the way there, Ethan. And Jacob, you're in there as well. Lots of people starting to throw in there, 12 over 13 as well. 12 over 13. And that just leaves us with tan theta, which hopefully everyone has started jumping on board. It's opposite over adjacent. And we've got ourselves five on 12. Okay. Cool. By the looks of the comments coming through, people all across that. Um, again, important that we're able to, to label triangles comfortably. All right, question two, example two here. It says, find the value of the pronumeral in the following triangles correct to three significant figures. Um, I think one thing to take note of is this three significant figures. It will pop up from time to time, um, same with scientific notation, and you're just kind of expected to know how to do it. Um, it's just a form of rounding. So what we need to do is we need to go through and, and solve this first. So having a look at the information that we have, um, what trigger ratio should we be using in this question here? Yep. Yeah. I agree, it's sine. We can see that 60 is our reference angle, x is on the opposite side to our reference angle, and 4 centimetres is opposite our hypotenuse, so that's sine. So we know that sine of theta is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse, so sine of 60 degrees is going to be x over 4. Yeah, thank you, Ethan. Um, and what I just want to point out right now, guys, is at this step here, it just stops being trigonometry and just becomes a simple algebraic expression to solve. What Once you've substituted in, you're just asked to find the answer x, which is the value of x. So you just manipulate the equation as you need to to get x by itself. We know that we need to multiply both sides by 4 to get the denominator away from x. So x is going to equal four times sine of 60 degrees. And sine of 60 degrees times four, 3.46. That's the rounded answer straight away. So we have 3.464 dot, dot, dot. Um, for me personally, this is how I would encourage you to demonstrate your understanding of, of rounding. We've asked you around to three significant figures. The so significant figures are the first three important numbers. So my first step is to write um, a little bit more digits than required. Um, and the dot, dot, dot represents that, hey, my, my decimal does continue on. And the, the four after the six has no impact in terms of rounding. So we have 3.46 centimetres, and that's rounded to three significant figures. All right. Um, again, this question, I would like to three significant figures. So can you guys have a, a quick a quick go at doing that one for me and throw up some answers when you get an option? Nice, Ruben. So hopefully 
there's a few answers popping up there. Hopefully we were able to figure out that that was 8.66 metres when we round it to three significant figures. Uh, one thing I just want to point out is that when um, our unknown is in a denominator, whatever's on the left-hand side just trades places. So the what you can see there that the Y and the tan, they swapped places. There's an outbreak process behind that. You multiply the left-hand side by Y and then you divide the left-hand side by tan to get Y by itself again, which is just why these two end up sw switching places. Cool, hopefully that's okay. Um, rounding over here to question three, example three here, um, I've asked you to find the value of theta in these two triangles correct in the nearest minute. So there's some of our rounding um, happening there again. Um, cool. So if we have a look at that first question there, um, that's the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So hopefully everyone can see that that would be uh, cosine. So cos theta equals r adjacent on hypotenuse. So, um, cool. So I've got cosine or cos theta is equal to five on, on 13. And remember with this step, this is where we have to press shift cos on your calculator to use the inverse function of cos. So theta is equal to cos, inverse cos of five on 13. And that's what we are putting on our calculator. And that will give us 67 degrees, 22 minutes, and 48.49 seconds, which having a look there, everyone, uh, the few answers starting to come through there. We recognize that 48, uh, 48 minutes, sorry, is above halfway. So we are landing at 67 degrees, 23 minutes. Uh, remembering that we have done some work with, with CERDs and you're expected to be able to be quite comfortable with CERDs um, so there's going to be a number of times we're going to ask you to leave things in exact values. Um, and we'll talk about exact values a little bit later on. But here you can see is an example of a triangle where it's hypotenuse is, is left as a surge. It's an exact value. Um, and so, you know, when you come across this, we, we need to be comfortable seeing that. So hopefully if we, we look at this one, we can see that that's sine of theta because one is the opposite side to the reference and then choose our hypotenuse. So that's going to be sine theta is equal to one on root two. So yeah, when you go theta is going to equal to inverse sine of one on root two, and that's just going to equal 45 degrees uh, and, and zero minutes, exactly. So 45 degrees, zero minutes, because it's spot on 45. Um, and that's actually quite interesting triangle to look at, a, a, a triangle that's got a, a side of one and a hypotenuse of root two. Cool. Um, so moving on from, from there, just quickly, um, something that, that's interesting is complementary angles. So um, remember that because uh, we've got a right angle triangle and one of them, the angle is 90 degrees and the angle sum of a triangle is 180 degrees. Because our, our bottom angle here, angle B in that triangle is displayed is 90, the other two angles, well, together they must add together to give 90 degrees to give us our total angle sum of 180 degrees. Um, and if we remember back, hopefully through year eight and year nine, uh, um, and again year 10, that complementary angles are two angles that add together to give 90 degrees. So if up in that triangle, you can see that because um, my top angle I've described as, as theta, that this angle down here, it's just 90 degrees minus theta because the angle sum of a triangle is 180 degrees. And when we look at the trigonometric ratios for complementary angles, one thing starts to, to come apparent to us that sine of theta is the exact same ratio, A over B, as cosine of the complementary angle. So you can see that cosine of C over B is the complementary of, of C over B. And that's something that's quite interesting to us. Um, just fun fact, interesting to look at, and that tan, well, they're just reciprocals of each other. 
without complementary angles. So that's fun. And the reason I say it's a fun fact is that cosine, the actual name for cosine just comes from that it's the complement of sine. So cosine just actually means the complement of sine. And we can see that relationship happening there. So that's where cosine came from. I don't know where sine came from. And tangent comes because it's a tangent line to a circle. And we'll explore that a little bit further on in this topic. 